good morning dear students welcome you all to the next lecture of the jc connect series of online lectures we are studying the subject elements of civil engineering and engineering mechanics and we are into module 1 so in today's lecture we will be discussing about your favorite topic which you have learned from long time that is your school days so today we will be discussing about newton's laws so as we all know newton was one of the most celebrated and the famous scientist and the day apple fell on the head all the science world changed so today we will study or say more than study at engineering level we'll try and understand newton's laws these many days we had newton's three laws we by hearted those three laws we wrote three laws but now a time has come where same concept has to be understood okay what exactly the law says how it originated how it works what are its applications so when you write the answers in the exam you might get newton's laws for say 3 marks just statement of the laws will do newton's law question will come for 6 marks also wherein with each law some explanation is expected and sometimes it has come for 10 marks also wherein you have to properly explain the concept so for us writing the three statements is not a big deal but today what we'll do is we'll make an attempt to understand newton's laws vedika is the screen visible and voice is clear yes sir okay thank you so let's start with first law so which we term as law of inertia also so it can it is possible that in the exam it can be stated that state and explain law of inertia so don't get confused it is nothing but newton's first law is anyone able to tell me this law anyone newton's first law you have studied it or shall i pick up the name newton's first law anyone of you enthusiastically we are meeting after 5 6 days or more than that anyone of you are able to put up newton's first law an object to maintain its uh, state of rest or uh, uniform motion until uh, external force is applied force on applied yes very good pritham nice attempt so we all know the newton's law as it states that every body remains in the state of rest or of uniform motion unless and until acted upon by some external force so what does newton's first law says any object which is stationary will remain stationary throughout or if it is moving with an uniform velocity it will remain in that motion throughout unless and until some external agency which we term as a force acts on it so newton's first law is also termed termed as law of inertia because inertia is the resistance of any physical object to any change in its velocity it includes changes to the object's speed or direction of motion so now this is the different thing which i feel we have to understand when you study newton's law in engineering we have to look at this law more as a law of inertia because for we engineers will design the things which will be in motion which will have to come to rest okay for example if you are taking a car if you design a car we got to have a accelerator as well as the brake should be there okay so firstly we'll understand now what is inertia inertia is nothing but it is an resistance of any physical object which offered to the change in its velocity that means any physical object if it is moving or if it is at rest then inertia force will always be there with every object in nature we have the force which is called as force of inertia so what is inertia it is defined as the resistance 
so the body wants to be as it is now you all you all were relaxed suddenly my link came many of you all were hoping that today also class will not be there so that it's saturday no class will be there so your body was relaxed because you had a force of inertia it said that you know today will relax today it's a saturday but suddenly the link came so people are slowly slowly joining so what was that it was the resistance okay so any force which is offering resistance to the motion okay or it doesn't want to undergo a change is that inertia force inertia force what it does is if it, you are moving with an uniform velocity you know it doesn't change if you are at rest it doesn't change so inertia is that inner force so the word is inertia so it represents something internal so it is that internal resistance developed by any object to any change with respect to velocity or say change of direction also so now we have to relate this inertia to newton's first law and so it is called as law of inertia also every body remains to be in the state of rest or of uniform motion unless and until acted upon by some external force now why a body remains in the state of rest or of uniform motion because it has something called as inertia then comes the question what is inertia inertia is that ability of the body to resist the change so as every body has that ability to resist the change what newton says when an external force acts on that body this inertia concept varies that means the force should be capable of overcoming the inertia of that body to cause the body to set in motion or to cause an moving body to alter its motion so that is what is newton's first law and that is how it is related with law of inertia or it is called as law of inertia so now again i am repeating this students firstly we need to understand what is inertia inertia is resistance offered by the body it is an internal force which offers resistance to any change in motion direction etc but now we want a body to be in motion how to set a body in motion that gives from comes from newton's first law so what does newton's first law say every body remains to be in the state of rest or of uniform motion because of which force inertia force but if you want to set a body in motion or if you want to alter the direction of motion or if you want to stop the body which is in motion you have to apply a force so from this we get the definition of force also we can say initially we defined a force force is an external agency which causes the change of position or anything so see here from newton's first law we can originate the definition of force so force if you read it opposite way force is an external agency which changes the state of a body from rest or from uniform motion so this is what is we got to learn in engineering it is not just about by hearting the newton's law so newton's first law is very closely related with the term inertia so hopefully you are clear with the definition of inertia now so now we have a ball kept on the floor so this is the floor surface and this is the ball so what will happen akshata are you there akshata salima yes sir yeah what will happen to the ball it is kept on the floor it is at rest yeah nothing will happen which is at rest because of which force inertia force inertia force correct the ball is not doing anything but now for the same ball okay the same ball you apply a force okay for the same ball you apply a force prajwal are you there yeah prajwal prajwal are you there Yes, sir. Yeah. What do you expect? What should happen? The ball should be in the motion. The ball should be in the motion. Okay, fine. Sagar Bajantri, are you there? Mr. Yes, Sagar? sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. As Prajwal said, ball should go in motion. Is it correct? Yes, sir. Correct, sir. Correct. But when the ball can go in motion? Some external force. Okay, fine. You fine. Thank you. saurabh saurabh are you there yes. yeah same question as both said ball should be in motion in which condition ball will set in motion 
is there any condition right. yeah force is applied force is there is there any condition for the force to set the ball in motion or no condition yes sir yeah what is that condition Move forward. Okay, fine. Thank you. Samiksha, Parit, are you there? Samiksha. Yes, sir. Yeah, Samiksha. What do you feel when the ball will set in motion? When the ball will move. Now this is the definition. Last one, Muskan. Yes, sir. Yeah, when the ball will start moving. Only when the force is applied is it enough? how much should be the force the force should be greater than the opposing force your force should be greater than the opposing force okay law of action okay. reaction yeah inertia the force should be greater than the inertia offered by the ball okay as inertia is an inert force when what happens when that force which we apply okay is able to overcome the inertia or the resistance offered by the ball the ball will start moving okay so in this case i'll say that the force is more so what happened ball started to move but if the force is less okay if the force is less the ball will not move because you are not overcoming that inertia now this is the other way of understanding the definition of newton's law so first figure when you look here okay here the ball is in rest okay ball is in rest why the ball is in rest because it has inertia what you did you applied a force it is not 100% that when you apply a force ball will start moving only no force should be greater than the inertia of this ball when the applied force becomes greater than the inertia of the ball the ball will start to move and that is why newton's first law is also termed as law of inertia okay so that is why we term newton's first law as law of inertia also because it is not only the force applied which will start rolling the ball it is the force applied which is greater than the inertia which is the internal resistance offered by that ball the ball will start moving so always remember concept of newton's first law is closely related with inertia inertia is the ability of the body to resist any change in the action or direction so force is that external agency which will set the ball in motion when it is greater than the inertia force offered this is how i am trying to present you all the newton's first law so newton's first law definition it is simple but through inertia concept also we can state newton's first law so i feel this is the difference we have studied newton's first law in school fine we have studied newton's first law in your pc also but here in engineering we are trying to understand the newton's first law relating it with the concept of inertia amruta is it clear amruta yes sir yes sir yeah explanation is clear yes sir okay so then comes your newton's second law so now what is the statement of newton's second law this is a bit tricky any one of you the rate of change, the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to force applied force applied okay very good prajwal yeah now prajwal define momentum prajwal you answered very nicely of, yeah product of yeah, like prajwal answer pratham yeah product of mass and velocity okay mass so now what happens is correct so when we study newton's second law as in first law the word inertia was very important in the second law momentum becomes very very important so newton's second law states that rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied and takes place in the direction of the force okay rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied and takes place in the direction of the force now you all are sitting nicely somewhere in the home with your headphones on we can do this newton's law pick up any piece of say or eraser or say a small chalk piece or anything you want okay 
and throw it okay if you want to throw it towards the ball you will throw it towards the ball wall okay that is what is direction so the rate of change of momentum comes here into picture so if we are playing cricket so if we are playing cricket a bowler has bowled a short delivery any one of you can tell me who likes cricket rcb fan out here virat kohli or abd is batting a short ball comes what will they do which shot they'll hit bouncer hai ball bouncer so which shot they will hit yes guys any one of you go ahead i'm trying to go for interaction so that uh, class remains active anand are you there anand yes sir ah uh, yes you watch cricket or you don't watch cricket hello yes, sir you watch ha huh? short ball hakidre yav shot hodtarappa bouncer idre upper cut sir they will push upper the ball cut, outside maya yeah. uh, uh, outside okay if it is outside the off stump upper cut over third man or if it is in the middle stump or leg stump they will hit a pull shot or a hook shot correct so now what is happening here the change in momentum is happening okay the ball was coming straight at the batsman what did the batsman do with the bat he changed the momentum of the ball and how it changed the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied and takes place in the direction of the force so when we want to change the momentum of any object what is important it is directly proportional to the force applied and it will take place in the direction of the force as nicely anand said they will play upper cut the ball will go towards the third man area okay because the direction which was given by the applied force is now taking that ball changing its momentum towards a particular direction which is the third man region if you are knowing cricket it is very easily understandable or any other game also you take which you are playing say for example you are playing carrom okay your striker needs to strike a coin or a queen so many shots are there okay you hit a rebound when when you hit a rebound shot what happens the striker strikes to the wall of the carrom board and comes back and hits the coin so what is happening what is happening there the change in momentum is taking place and it will take place in the direction you have applied the force okay so newton's second law can be understand very easily by taking examples of sports which you play okay which you play because there is a something called as changing momentum by which the direction of the moving object changes so momentum is the quantity of motion of a moving body and is measured as a product of mass into velocity so now see here when the definition of momentum is asked you tell it is a product of mass into velocity but we are asking what is momentum we are not asking how to find momentum how to find momentum it is product of mass into velocity accepted okay product of mass into velocity is momentum fine but what is momentum momentum is the quantity of motion of a moving body okay momentum is the rate at which the body is moving you can say it is the quantity of motion of a moving body okay a train is moving fast means it has a high momentum okay you are running fast means you have a high momentum that means the quantity of motion of a body we term it as momentum and how we calculate it it is calculated as the product of mass into velocity you want to bunk a class okay you want to bunk a class and you see that professor is coming okay you want to bunk a class and you see that the professor is coming okay santosh are you there santosh yes sir yeah if you want to bunk a class and you see the professor coming what happens to your momentum momentum increases or decreases yes decreases hmm vijay lakshmi patil vijay lakshmi are you there yes you want to bunk a class hopefully you are not that type who bunks a class you want to bunk a class okay and you see the professor is coming so what happens to your momentum you start it increases it increases why it increases because you start running fast or moving fast or you yes. from first year class corridor you go towards the physics lab and hide there so once the professor goes towards the class you go down correct 
Yes. Ah, so what had happened in that way? Quantity of motion changed. So that is momentum. And how we calculated mass into velocity. Okay. Got the point? Thank you, Vijay Lakshmi, for your answer. Genuine answer. Yes. Yeah. So that is what is momentum. So momentum is something which is the quantity of motion of a body, moving body, and it is measured as a product of mass into velocity. So guys, make a small correction. Next time when someone asks you the definition of momentum, yeah, it is a product of mass and velocity. It is exactly, absolutely right. But it is the way in which we find momentum. Okay, but what is exactly momentum? It is the quantity of motion of a moving body. Okay, so momentum changes. Okay, momentum changes. But see here, mass remains the same. What you vary, velocity you vary to change the momentum. So understand this. Okay, you can move. If you are walking with your friend and you want to talk more and more, you walk very slowly. When you come late to the college, okay, many of you all might have experienced it. Sachin, are you there? Sachin? Yes, sir. Yeah, when you come late, come late to the college. To the college. Yes. Got my point? Yes. Uh, and what does, uh, when you see Colonel, sir, Colonel, what happens? What happens? Momentum increases or decreases? Increases, sir. Increases. Why? Uh -huh. yeah, because he'll say, what's the time? Move to the classes, right? right. Yes, sir. So at that time your momentum changed, your mass did not change, mass was same, but what yes. changed? Velocity changed, correct? Yes sir. Yeah, that is what is momentum. Thank you Sachin. Yes sir. Yeah. So this is how you can understand what is momentum. You want to reach the theater very quickly, but nowadays theaters are closed, that question is not arising. Your friends are waiting at the gate with the ticket. You automatically, what you do? You accelerate your bike so that you reach fast, which is not recommended, but still you do. So we are playing with the velocity. Here, mass is constant. So momentum is the quantity of motion of a moving body and is measured as the product of mass and velocity. And now, when you want to change this rate of change of momentum, it is directly proportional to the force applied and takes place in the direction of the force. That is how Newton defines your momentum. So in first law, Newton used inertia and defined how inertia can change. And in Newton's second law, what has Newton done? He has used the momentum concept and he has said that how applying a force, momentum changes. In both things, force is there. Okay, so you can define force with respect to Newton's second law also. So actually what happens is when you have knowledge how you can define force? You can define force using Newton's first law also, and you can define force using Newton's second law also. Okay, Akshata? Yes, sir. Can you define force using Newton's second law? Can you give a try? Force is uh, directly proportional to the moment of yeah, rate of no, change of force. momentum. Yes, or force is an external agency which causes a change in momentum, right? Okay, yes, thank you, Akshata. Yeah, uh -huh. so now this is how we define force because it, force is an external agency which causes change in. So, what is that cause change in motion? The cause of change in motion is nothing but momentum. So, using second law, also we can define the definition of force we can get. So, that is how Newton has framed these laws very, very beautifully. So from Newton's first law, again, we can define force. Newton's second law, we can define force. So first law is associated with inertia, and second law is associated with the momentum. So from first, we have to remember what is inertia. We have to understand what is inertia. And from second, we have to understand what is momentum. So Newton's second law can be formally stated as the acceleration of an object as produced by a net force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force in the same direction as the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So we get that definition. The statement is expressed in the equation form as A is equal to F by M or 
the above equation can be rearranged to form a very familiar statement which is f is equal to m into a so force is a product of mass and acceleration so many times we find students who define a force as product of mass and acceleration also now we as teachers should have that understanding we cannot say that you have to write definition of force as it is some external agency no if you define force is equal to ma newton's law is worldwide accepted force is the product of mass and acceleration so now when this terms mass and acceleration comes everything gets covered okay so this is how we can use your newton's second law so next time if you are asked with a definition of force now for getting marks and all this purpose okay fine textbook definitions are fine but you go with all the definitions which are understanding wise be practical because you will be engineers only studying the books or by having the definitions from the book won't make you a good engineer applying those definition and developing equations or systems of your own will make you a good engineer so newton's second law of motion unlike the first law of motion pertains to behavior of the object yes it is telling about the behavior of the object that is the difference between first law and second law and first law we said everybody remains to be in the state of rest or of uniform motion okay we are not going with the behavior here we are saying the body has a momentum means it is moving in some direction its direction changes so in newton's second law we are going a bit ahead with the behavior of the object then the second law of motion is more quantitative and is used extensively to calculate what happens in the situation involving the force okay so here we are applying ourselves in newton's second law it is core of engineering we are studying how it happens why it happens how the direction changes what is momentum what happens if the mass changes what happens with the velocity changes okay so this is more quantitative means you are getting more output from this law and again we are here saying that force is equal to the rate of change of momentum okay force is equal to the rate of change of momentum the second law defines force as the product of mass and acceleration so now this will be the explanation if the question comes for 9 marks each equation sorry each law will be for 3 marks so you if you write just the statement you are getting one mark then you have to mention that equation f is equal to ma and write these points i'll share these pdfs with you all not to worry okay and if i am not sharing it please any one of you remind because we have other two three classes running and sometimes you miss out so please remind i'll share so this is how i put up the newton's second law so i feel that going in this way we are involving in the subject as well as more emphasis is given on understanding of the law instead of by hurting the law now when i say first law directly which word should come inertia when i say second law what word should come momentum so now we have an example here so all of you you are able to see some example on the screen just go through it i'll pick up one or two of you and then we'll discuss about this image which i have shown so now chandan are you there yes sir yeah you are able to see the image right yes sir yeah can you explain me the first two images what's happening uh, so it's like uh, when you apply large force and uh, uh, small mass uh, it gives a large acceleration acceleration because in the first image how many engines are there uh, two engines are there and how many bogies are there two. only one bogie okay one, sorry one, bogie. one. one bogey so yeah. engine is producing more force so large force small mass gives you large acceleration so what is happening in the second one uh, uh, it uh, small force uh, and uh, small mass gives uh, less acceleration i mean less one engine and uh, one uh, bogey okay very good so what happens in which case momentum is more first one sir first one because applied force is more and mass is less thank you very much neha patil are you there yes sir yes sir don't worry don't don't, don't take any tension this is not an exam hmm. so uh, tell me the third figure okay when we are discussing the third figure chandan has nicely told first to the third one mm, large force large mass gives less acceleration correct, correct 
So what is happening what here? Happening How here? many engines How many we have? We have two engines. Bogies are Bogies also are also two. So, so force is large, force is large and, and acceleration is acceleration is less. Ha, uh, acceleration actually force actually is large, force and, large and, and mass is also mass large. Large. Hence acceleration is acceleration less. Is less. Or momentum, or momentum is, is less. 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 Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yes. Monish, are you there? Monish. Yes, yeah. Last figure. Can you explain? Uh, small force and uh, mass is large. Sir. Uh, less yeah, acceleration is very less. Less uh, acceleration is less. Means momentum also will be less. Okay. So here we have a combination. We have force and mass. So what happens in the first figure is, as Chandan rightly told, we have a higher force and a lesser mass. So momentum will be high. So rate of change of momentum also will be high because force is high. In the second, one bogey, one engine. Small force and small mass, but acceleration will be high because force is good and mass is less. So first is the highest acceleration. Second is okay. In third, what is happening? It is sort of balancing. Two engines are there and two bogies are there. So we can compare the first and third figure. So comparatively, in the third figure where two engines are there, okay, but two bogies have come in. Two loads are there. So again, acceleration will be limited. And when we go to the last one, we see that only one engine is there and two bogies are there. So now, Chetan, Avti, are you there? Chetan. Chetan, are you there? Srinivas Shinde? Srinivas. Srinivas Shinde, are you there? Srinivas? Okay, fine. I think uh, you have some range issues. Okay, it's okay. Prerna, are you there? Perna. Yes, sir. Yeah. So in this all four figures, which is the one which will give you least momentum? In all these four, which is the one which will give you least momentum? Fourth one. Fourth one. Why? Third one. Hey, don't change the options. So now fourth and third. Now we don't know the engine force, but here if we say that all engines are same and all bogies are same, then last one only has to give you least momentum because one engine is carrying two bogies. Okay, so what is happening in the fourth figure? Single force is carrying two bogies, so it will give you the least momentum. So this is how you can understand what is momentum and how your Newton's second law works. So now comes the third law. Okay, so this is favorite. This is everyone's favorite. Hmm. So, Tokir, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, define this for me. Easiest one. For every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. Reaction. Okay, very good. Yes. So, this is our law of action and reaction, and it is favorite. Okay, we all know. Go to the kitchen, take something, and throw it down. Okay, that was your action. So, who will give the reaction? Your mother will give you the yes. reaction. Yes. Yeah. If you are lucky, you will escape by shouting. If she has something in her hand, it will come to you. So, that was the instant reaction given by your mom. So, she is following which law? Newton's third law. Okay, you can just get up, go and try. Take a steel thing. Huh? Don't drop any glass thing. Otherwise, you will get some hitting. Just go and take a glass, drop it down. You will get an instant reaction. Okay. You will surely get an instant reaction. Boys will get a heavy reaction. Okay. Boys will get a more reaction. So if you want, you can just get up from your place. If you are using a mobile phone, go to the kitchen and do it. That is what is the Newton's third law. Okay. What does Newton's third law state? It states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, there we are talking in terms of uh, voice reaction or some other thing, but here we'll talk in terms of force, as Newton is always defining his laws with respect to force. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The beauty of this law is, it can be applied to force also, and it can be applied to life also. So if I'm asking you all questions, you're responding nicely, the class is active, I'll be more happy to conduct the class, and the classes will go smoothly. But if you are not responding, 
okay if you are sitting like a mob person or just your uh, this meeting is on and you are not there and if i take the names so my reaction will be i'll ignore you next time and i'll mark you absent for the class already two three people have marked absent because they did not reply okay that is my reaction so it is a law of nature i feel so it is not only to the force system but to the universal system you are good i am good you are bad i am worst as simple as that that happens in life okay so that is what happens with the force also for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so the good thing we find in the answer papers is when we have a question define newton's law let that person be any person he will not be able to write first and second law but he writes third law okay because third law is such that it is universal again and you remember it throughout and you experience it also daily this newton third law is an part and parcel okay newton third law is part and parcel in everything we do there is an action and equal and opposite reaction okay so action here is the input and reaction generally will be the output so action is the input and reaction will be the output for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so reaction is directly dependent on the action okay that's what i told you drop a steel thing steel glass you drop fine same you drop a glass okay glass vessel glass article you drop of course reaction will be more or less more more of obviously more okay obviously more because it is directly proportional to your action okay directly proportional to your action then next reaction is not caused without action okay now this sometimes in life this principle cannot be applied but with force it is surely applicable okay a ball was resting on the floor ball will remain on the floor itself if no force is applied on it lifetime it will remain there only okay if a force is not applied because without any action there will be no reaction then next is thus if a body exerts a force f on the second body the first body under also undergoes the force of same strength but in the opposite direction so always remember the action and reaction will be in the opposite direction okay action and reaction will be in the mutually opposite directions okay in which direction you are giving the action in the opposite direction you will get an reaction and this is the most practical law i feel out of the newton's three laws what we have this is the most practical law because we experience this law everywhere and we can directly apply it and there is no much stress required to understand okay so now here i am hitting a nail okay in a wooden element so what happens the force on the hammer is the red thing which is offered by the nail surface and that hammering is applying the force which is shown in blue color so when your force applied by the hammer becomes more okay is good force then your nail starts going in for that action you get the reaction the reaction is that the nail is going inside the wood okay so that is what is action and reaction so this is a very simple easy example and i think while doing this thing by mistake few of you all must have hit your hand then again you got a reaction which was not on the nail but on your finger okay okay that is also a nail on the finger that was the nail on the finger which experienced the reaction in that case when you have done this exercise in home many of us have broken a finger going to while hammering a nail in the wall okay so this is a very practical example which all of you have done for newtons third law that is every action has equal and opposite reaction so now before going to the next thing let's quickly brush up all the three laws okay all the three laws let us quickly brush up aishwarya hokkeri aishwarya hokkeri yeah first law is about what law of inertia law of inertia very good nice 
Lakshmi, are you there? Lakshmi. Lakshmi, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. What What is inertia? What is inertia? If you remember, yes. If you don't remember, say no. Sorry, sir, I don't remember. Body remains at the rest. It is the internal ability of the body to resist motion. Okay, fine. Good. So, first law states that it is all about the inertia thing. So, when your force is able to overcome inertia, your body will start motion or change in motion or anything will take place. That was Newton's first law. Then what was Newton's second law about? Ohm, are you there? Ohm? Yes, sir. Yeah, what was Newton's second law about? Law of momentum. Law of momentum. Very good. Mukesh, are you there? Yes, Mukesh, sir. Yeah, what is momentum? Uh, momentum uh, product of mass and velocity. Uh, uh, okay, fine. Again, I did not ask you how to find momentum. Okay, fine, Mukesh, no problem. Hmm. Vedika, can you answer what is momentum as I explained? Quantity of motion of a moving body. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So that is what is momentum, quantity of motion of a moving body. And how we calculate it is a product of mass into acceleration. So we took the example of the train engines there. Hmm. Shashank, are you there? Shashank Ali? Shashank? Yes, sir. Yeah. When the force applied is high, okay, and the body is light in weight, momentum will be high or low. Hi, sir. Hi. Correct. Very good. Thank you. Okay. So, here we can take an example of your Formula 1 cars. They are built of the lightest possible material so that the engine which is fit will give you, will give it the highest acceleration. So, then we came up to Newton's third law. Prajwal Patil, are you there? Prajwal? Prajwal Patil. Prajwal is absent. Yes. Yeah, you're there. Okay, fine. Newton's yes, third law. Give, give me an example. Newton's third law. Newton's third law. Give me an example. If we throw a ball. Yes. If we throw a ball to wall, the ball will come back. Yes. If we throw a rubber ball to a wall. Yes, correct. Very good. Mm. Yeah. Correct. Okay, very good, Prajwal. Thank you for your answer. Yes, when we are playing in home, yes. when we throw a rubber ball towards the wall, it will come back to us. So it will come back to us with more speed if we have thrown with more speed. If we don't throw it with high speed, it will come back to us very slowly. So very good example Prajwal has given. So these are the Newton's laws. So first law is the law of inertia. Second law is the law of momentum. And third law is the law of action and reaction. So this is how we have studied Newton's laws in this class. So I request you all to drop the attendance with your name and USN so that we can conclude today's class. Thank you all for attending today's class. Have a nice weekend. Take care. God bless all. Thank you. So share the notes. Yes, yes. Surely I'll make the PDF and share. Surely I'll share.